Good afternoon and welcome to our service here at Online Bible Church. We are so glad that you have joined us. What a wonderful week it's been. The weather's starting to get better and I was able to do a lot of uh, yard work and I cut the grass yesterday or two days ago and it looks like it might need to be cut again. Um, doing some planting and, and uh, we moved the fern. We have a fern in our dining room. We moved it outside and so... Um, summer is coming, and, and uh, the trees are budding, and the birds are chirping. I noticed the other morning that I often wake up to the sounds of birds chirping, and what a wonderful creation that God has given us, praise the Lord. So as far as announcements go, I don't really have many. Uh, just Bible study, uh, Wednesday night. I filmed this week's Bible study this morning. And it was a tough one to film. I actually had to go back and redo it a couple of times because um, it was a difficult teaching. But um, when you're teaching the Word of God and you're teaching the truth, I believe that, that God will bless that. And I believe that God um, will anoint the words that are spoken that are true. And so we're going to go and we're going to worship the Lord uh, this morning or this afternoon. We're going to start out with a hymn, Joy Unspeakable. If you have the hymn book, Sing Unto the Lord, it's number 33. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as free indeed. And it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of Glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. And it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear. Living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near. I can see His smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable. Speakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell, how its great waves of glory roll. It is like a great o'erflowing well, springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell how its graves of glory roll. It is like a great o'erflowing well springing up within my soul. And it is joy unspeakable and full of 
Glory, full of glory, full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. Yes, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What joy unspeakable. And the half hasn't even been told yet. Praise the Lord. Let's sing that hymn. What a day that will be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain. No more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, oh, what a day. Glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that 
that will be amen hallelujah praise the lord i love that song in fact i think i want that song sung at my funeral that and victory in jesus i believe are probably my favorite praise the lord what a wonderful day it's going to be when we become face to face with jesus christ and we're going to talk a little bit about that today we're going to talk a little bit about the glorified body that we are going to receive when we enter into eternity either at the rapture or at the resurrection praise the lord but before we do that we're going to pray uh this afternoon and i want to pray for grandma um, she is having a biopsy on Thursday, that mass that we've prayed for on her brain. Um, we're going to pray for her, and we're going to pray that everything's going to work out. Uh, we're going to pray for healing for her. We know that God still heals. We may not have the gifts of healing and miracles any longer, but God can still heal. Praise the Lord. So we are going to pray for her. We're also going to pray for uh, my wife, Samantha. She's having her um, Holter monitor on her um, next week, I believe it is. And so we're going to pray for her that this heart murmur, uh, when they read the, the report of the Holter monitor, they'll say, what heart murmur? There is no heart murmur. It's gone. And I believe that God is able to do that. And so we're going to pray for these two needs today. Maybe you're watching, and maybe you have some needs of your own. Well, you can pray as well. And you can lift up your needs to God. And uh, God will hear your prayers. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we are able to come together and worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We sung these songs this morning. We're so glad that you fill us with joy, that joy unspeakable. We pray, God, uh, um, that when we pass into eternity and each one of us are going to die, and we might even be lucky enough to live at the rapture, and, and we won't die physically. So I just pray, Lord, that uh, as I preach this message, I pray, God, that you'll be in it. I pray, God, that you'll anoint the words, Lord, that you'll give me a boldness, the conviction to preach forth the truth with boldness, Lord. I want to pray for these needs today. I want to pray, Lord, for Grammy Lane as she goes for this biopsy. And they try to find out what's going on with this mass that's in her brain. We pray, Lord, that this mass is benign. We pray, Lord, that it will not grow, that it in fact will shrink. We pray, God, that you will just be with her, Lord, in those times when she's alone. We pray, God, that you'll encourage her and comfort her, Lord, and let her know that you're there and you care for her, Lord. I want to pray for my wife, Samantha, as she's getting ready for this uh, Holter monitor that she has to wear next week for two days, Lord. I pray, God, that uh, the results will come back and they will be positive and that there will be nothing to be concerned about. We pray, God, that as they look at the results and try and figure out what this heart murmur is, we pray, God, that there will be no heart murmur. We pray, God, that you will heal that right now, Lord. And just We pray that you'll just calm her nerves as she goes in for this test. We pray, Lord, that the, she will not be anxious and nervous, but give her calmness, give her a sense of peace, that wonderful peace that passes understanding. And so, again, I just want to pray, Lord, for this message I'm going to preach today that I've put together with your help, Lord, and I just pray, God, that somebody watching this video today will hear this message and will say, I needed that. Pray, God, that somebody that needs to hear this message will hear this message. We pray, Lord, that you'll bring souls in, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And the church said, Amen. I remember I went to a church when I was younger. And uh, the pastor prayed. And at the end of the prayer, he always said, And the church said, and then the church would say, Amen. So, Amen. And of course, when you say Amen, you're basically saying, I agree with that. It's, it's a, an agreement. And so last week, we started a new sermon series. And I told you that the name of the sermon series is Look Up Child, and I told you why. Um, there's a song by Lauren Daigle, 
Look Up Child, and that is in fact my wife's favorite singer, uh, Lauren Daigle. And of course, her message in this with the song Look Up Child is, is more of um, looking up for hope, looking at God. But I'm, I'm talking about physically looking up. Because last week we talked about the rapture, we talked about the fact that Jesus is coming, and we know that the signs of the times are all around us. We know that everything is in place for Jesus to return. We know that he's coming very, very soon. And so we talked last week about the rapture, what was going to happen, about how the dead in Christ are going to come up out of their graves. We talked about how we, which are alive when the rapture happens, are going to be caught up together with them. We talked about all of that last week. And so um, if you didn't get a chance to watch that, please go watch it. It is a comfort. Paul, when he talked about the rapture, he said, comfort one another with these words. And what a comfort it is to know that as the earth gets worse and worse and it waxes worse and worse, as doth an old garment, the Bible says, to know that our hope is in Jesus Christ returning, that we're going to be pulled out of this very soon. And today I want to talk about the glorified body. We mentioned the glorified body last week, and I told you that when we go up at the rapture, or we, if we're dead and we come out of our graves, how we're going to be given a glorified body. And we're going to look at that today. I've got a number of scriptures that we're going to go through, and I'm hoping we have time to get through all of them. So we've got a lot of ground to cover, and so we're going to start in 1 Corinthians 15. And I want to read a passage of scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to read verses 35 and down. Verses 35 and down. But some man will say, how were the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat, or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleasure, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And I'm going to stop there. But there was a lot of stuff that was talked about in that passage. And basically what it's saying is, Paul is saying, some are going to ask, how are the dead raised up? A lot of people, when they think about the rapture and they think about the resurrection, especially those people that have already died, they kind of scratch their head and wonder, how is that going to happen? There are some people that are in the grave that have been in there for thousands of years, and they're probably rotted right to nothing but a skeleton, if that. How is that going to be raised up? How is that going to be resurrected? What about people that uh, are not in one piece? What about people that have died and and they're, they're either been cremated, and their ashes are anywhere, or they're, uh, they've been a, the unfortunate victim of, of a killer, or, or of um, uh, a, an accident where their body is in separate pieces, and maybe not all the body parts have been found. How is that going to be raised up? How is that going to be resurrected? Well, you can rest assured that no matter how you die or how many pieces you're in, you're going to be resurrected if you are part 
of the resurrection. We're not all going to be a part of the resurrection. We're not all going to resurrect out of the, out of the grave. We're not all going to be raptured. Only those that trust in Jesus Christ. Only those that trust in the wonderful gospel and the blood of Jesus Christ. And so there's a couple of things that have been mentioned in this passage of Scripture about what the resurrected body is going to look like. And I want to draw your attention to verse 44. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 44. It says this, It is so a natural body. The natural body is the body that you're in right now. This is my natural body. It gets sick. It gets tempted. Sometimes it sins. Sometimes it does wrong, but it tries to do right. You know, this is my natural body. This is the body that I'm in. This is the corruptible flesh that I live in. It is so in a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. And so this corruptible flesh that we have is going to be shed, and it's going to be turned into something spiritual. That's what type of body it's going to be. It's going to be a spiritual body. It's going. The second thing is it's going to be, is it will be a real body like that of Christ. And to look at that, we're going to go into the book of Luke, chapter 24, and verse 39. Luke 24, and verse 39. One more page. It says this, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And so this is Jesus after he died. This is Jesus after he resurrected. And he appeared. And he had flesh and bones. He had everything that this natural body has. In fact, you can handle me. You can touch me. You can touch me and feel me. Remember the story of Thomas. Doubting Thomas, they call him. Remember, he wouldn't even believe that it was Jesus until Jesus showed him the nail scars that he still had in his hands and in his feet. And, and Jesus said to Thomas, touch and look. And when Thomas touched it, he realized that was Jesus. How can that be? And so our glorified body is going to be similar to what Jesus had. It will be a recognizable body, having identity with the physical body. Let's, let's stay in Luke. I shouldn't have turned back yet. Luke 24. And let's read verse uh, 42. Sorry. No, Luke 24, verse 39. That's the verse we just read. There's going to be a recognizable body. They knew that it was Jesus. They knew that was him. Thomas, he saw Jesus, but he didn't believe it. And once he, he in, inspected the nail scars, then he knew it was Jesus. And Jesus said here that a spirit does not have flesh and bone, but I do. So our glorified body is going to not only have flesh and bone... But it's going to be uh, have a likeness of what our physical body used to look like. The Bible says we will be known as we are known. We are known as we are known. And so when we all get to heaven, you can see me and say hi to me. And if I know you, I can say hi to you. I'll recognize you. Let's go back to the book of 1 Corinthians. There's a couple of other things here that Paul said about this glorified body. There's going to be an imperishable body. Let's go to verse 43 and look at that. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. We are weak mortal beings right now. We, we cannot lift up a car. We can, I, I got the, uh, the floor joists here above me, and I can grab a hold of them. And I can, oh, I can barely even lift myself up off the ground. So I'm just a weak, mortal being. That's, that's me. We're going to be, when we get raised, we're going to have power. 
It's going to be a spiritual body. It's going to be an imperishable body. But it's also going to be a glorious body. And what does that mean? That means we're no longer going to be subject to Satan's attack. That I'm excited about right there. That I'm going to live in a body when I get my glorified body that's not going to be tempted to sin any longer. It's not going to get sick. It's not going to get ill. It's not going to suffer. It's not going to have pain. None of this stuff. It's just going to be wonderful. Everything that's wrong with your body is going to be fixed when you get your glorified body. When you reach a certain age, things start falling apart. And things start to quit working. And what doesn't hurt, what doesn't work, hurts. And what doesn't hurt, doesn't work when you get to a certain age. But that's not going to be the case in our glorified body. Our glorified body is not going to be corruptible. Our glorified body is not going to be sick. Our glorified body is not even going to be hungry. We're going to look at that in a minute. It's going to be a powerful body. It's going to lose the frailty of its mortality. You ever hurt yourself? You ever stub your toe? That's probably the worst pain you can feel, is stubbing your toe. I hate stubbing my toe. Can you imagine never having pain to stub your toe again? Can you imagine that? To not get hurt? Not hurt yourself? To not fall and break a leg or, or anything like that? I've never broken a bone in my body ever. But I've dislocated my knee a couple of times. And I tell you, ooh, I wouldn't wish that pain on anybody. But I am so thankful that when I get my glorified body, my knee is never going to come apart. It's pretty exciting. Let's look at verse 49. Verse 49. It says this, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And so, we're going to be like Christ. We're going to be like Jesus Christ. Our glorified body is going to be identical to the body that was buried. But there's not going to be an organic connection between the body that was buried and the body that's raised. Someone said, this is a quote, if it were so, we would need a creation and not a resurrection. What grows from the seed we shall sow is not altogether identical with that which is sown. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 37. Verse 37. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. And so it's going to be a body, but it's not going to have the imperfections that we have here in the flesh today. Each seed, each kind of seed has a distinctiveness. According to verse 38. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Well, that goes all the way back to Genesis. When God made the earth, and he, he said, um, everything's going to come make after its kind, after its type, after its type of, of animal. So you can have a dog that'll bring forth a dog. You're never going to have a dog that brings forth anything other than a dog. So evolution, if you believe in evolution, you're believing in a fairy tale. So in verses 42 to 44 of our passage, Paul contrasts the old body with the new body. Paul does that contrast. Verse 42, it is sown perishable, but it is raised imperishable. Once you're in your glorified body, you're never going to die again. We do a lot of things to not die. Some of us take medications that help our body. Maybe we have a disease or we have some, something wrong with us that we need to take medication to uh, help the, with that. Maybe you have um, 
you need to be on a blood thinner, or maybe you have high blood pressure like me. I have high blood pressure, and I take blood pressure medication. I take Perindopril every morning. In my glorified body, I'm not going to need to do that, because I'm not going to have the, the problems that this physical body today has. Sam, my wife, is not going to need a Holter monitor when she gets her glorified body, because she's not going to have any heart problems. Whatever problems you have in your body today are going to be erased when you get your glorified body. Verse 43. Sown in dishonor, raised in glory. We can do a lot of things with this flesh today that's dishonorable. We can sin. We can do all kinds of things. We can get drunk. We can sleep around. We can, we can smoke marijuana and do whatever terrible other things you can think of. We can do all that. And that's dishonorable. But when we get our glorified body, we're not going to sin. We're not going to have the desire to sin. Verse 43 says, sown in weakness, but we're going to be raised in power. We're weak mortal beings today. Go out and lift up a car. I actually don't. You're going to have a lot of power in your glorified body. You might even be able to lift a car when you get your glorified body. Praise the Lord. Verse 44, so in a natural body, raised a spiritual body. And the body of Christ was the only body not subject to corruption. When Jesus Christ was in his glorified body after he resurrected, he can do all kinds of things that we today cannot do. And we're going to look at some of those today. Let's go to the book of John, the 20th chapter. John chapter 20. We're going to look at a couple of things that Jesus did in his glorified body. And our glorified bodies are going to be just like that. John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verses 19 to 20. John chapter 20, verses 19 to 20. Then, that, then the same day as evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and said, saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them the hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. What did Jesus do? He passed through a closed door. You ever tried to do that? You ever tried to do that in your natural flesh? Go ahead. Go try and walk through a closed door. It's not going to work. See, these people... The disciples, they went into a room and they locked themselves in a room because they were afraid of the Jews that were persecuting them. But Jesus went in anyway. Jesus passed right through that closed and locked door. You're going to be able to do that in your glorified body. We can't do that today. Another thing that, that uh, um, Jesus had, it's going to be a pattern, is we're going to be able to eat. Do you ever like to eat? I love to eat. I love to sit down with a pizza. Maybe that's my, my problem. Maybe that's my weakness. Pizza is my weakness. But remember, we're sowed in weakness. We're going to be raised in glory. So we're not going to have that weakness. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm not going to I've got a number of, of verses here, but I'm, we're not going to turn to them for the sake of time because we're already at 2.34. And so, I'm just going to give you the scripture verse, and then I'm going to tell you what Jesus did, just so um, you know. And you can pause the video later and come back and watch it. John 21, verses 9 to 13, Jesus ate with his disciples. And so, when we're given our glorified body, we're still going to eat. We may not get hungry. I have no idea. I don't think we're going to get hungry, but we can still eat if we want to. 
Uh, Luke 24, verses 39 says he had flesh and bones. The Lord's body retained the scars of the crucifixion. Now, does that mean that if we get scarred in our life, let's say we, have, we burn ourselves, and we have a scar, does that mean that scar is going to live with us? I don't know. But Jesus had the scars of the crucifixion. But I believe he kept those scars for a reason. To show, because Thomas wouldn't have believed if Jesus hadn't have showed him the scars. They wouldn't have believed if Jesus didn't show them the evidence that it was him. And so I don't think we're going to have the, the scars and the things that we have here on earth. But Jesus did. Um, there is one verse that I would love to uh, turn to. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 8. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 8. It says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. This is one of the reasons why I don't believe in ghosts. I used to. I used to think this house was haunted. A few years ago, there were some things that happened that I couldn't explain. But I don't believe that anymore. Why? Because I don't believe that when we die, we hang around the earth as a spirit. When we die, our spirit... When our spirit leaves our body, we are present with the Lord. Our body's still in the grave waiting for the resurrection. But when we die, our spirit goes right back to God. And the same thought is, is taught in the Old Testament in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and verse 7. It says, And the spirit shall return to God who gave it. God gives us a spirit when we're born. Actually, God gives us a spirit when we're conceived. And if you're a Christian today and you support abortion, you better think again. Because that life is a life of conception. John the Baptist received the spirit of God while he was still in his mother's womb. You want to tell me that an that a, that a unborn child is just a fetus? That it's just a blob of flesh? No, John the Baptist, while he was still a fetus, received the Spirit of God. All life is sacred, from conception to natural death. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. Let's turn there, and I'm going to close with this. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. Paul says this, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. The fear of death is probably one of the most common fears. What's going to happen when you die? You think Paul feared death? If you're in Christ... If you have the Spirit of God within you, if you trust in the Gospel, when you die, you're going to gain. And so I don't fear death. I'm not worried about death. I'm not worried about any of that kind of stuff. I'm not worried about the coronavirus. I'm not worried about any of that kind of stuff. Why? Because I know that when I die, absent from my body, present with the Lord. The Bible also says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And so death, if you're a Christian, is not a bad thing. Now, it's a sad thing for the family and your friends that are left behind. You're going to miss that person. I know of Christians that have died. My grandmother, I've mentioned her a couple of times. I was very sad when she passed away. But she was a saved lady. She was 95 years old when she died. And she was saved and she served the Lord faithfully almost that whole time. And when she died, I was sad. And the family was sad because she was, 
She's such a wonderful soul. She was great to have around. She, she was a, just, just such a precious person. And when she died, we were sad. We missed her. But it was more of a celebration because she got to go home to be with Jesus. And so there's no point in a Christian being afraid of death. There's no point in Christians fearing death and wondering what's beyond it. What's beyond it is we get to be with Jesus. Now, last week we prayed for Pastor Perry and his family as they had lost their mother. And I'm sure that family is sad and they miss her. But the good news is she's gone home to be with the Lord. And when somebody's gone home to be with the Lord, we've learned today in the passages of scriptures that we read today in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, we learned that we are going to be known as we are known. We are going to uh, bear a resemblance of what we were before. And I believe we're going to know each other. Now, me and my wife, when we die, I don't think we're going to be husband and wife in uh, heaven. I don't, I don't believe there's going to be marriages in heaven. I, I can't prove it to you biblically, but I can't disprove it either. But I don't think we're going to be married. I don't think we're going to have these relationships that we have here on earth. I don't think we're going to, we're going to see, I'm going to see my great-grandmother, but I don't think she's going to be my great-grandmother in heaven. I think she's going to be Ruby Castleman. I don't think when my wife and I pass away, we're going to be married, but we're going to know each other. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Marty. We're going to know each other. So there's going to be a reunion. That rapture, when we get to go home to be with Jesus at the rapture, what a wonderful reunion that's going to be. I'm going to get to see my grandmother. I'm going to get to see my grandfather. My grandpa, he, <laughs> he got saved less than a week before he died. He knew the end was coming. He called uh, Pastor Kelsey up. Pastor Kelsey led him to the Lord, shared the gospel with him. My grandfather accepted it less than a week before he died. And I believe that when I get to heaven, I'm going to see him again. Pastor Kelsey, that I just mentioned, he was a wonderful, wonderful man of God. And um, he died a couple years ago, maybe two, maybe three years ago. And uh, he gave me a lot of wisdom. He gave me a lot of, of, of knowledge and things that I still preach today. Um, I learned from him. Now, we, we would differ on some doctrines. He was more of a Pentecostal, and, and I'm more of a Baptist. But um, he believed in the gospel, and he preached the gospel. And so I'm going to get to see him again, too. He won't be my pastor in heaven, but he will... Hey, Marty! Hey, Pastor Kells. Oh, he won't be my pastor. Hey, Ian! So what a reunion it's going to be when we get to heaven. So I'm going to close it there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the presence that you've given us today. Lord, we pray, God, that this message that I preached fell on somebody that needed to hear it. I want to pray, Lord, um, that you'll be with each one of us this week. I pray, God, that um, as we go about our week, that uh, you'll help us grow. You'll give us a desire to study your word and that we'll grow in you, Lord. I want to pray again for Grandma. Elaine, I want to pray, Lord, that this biopsy will be fine, that they will realize that it's just a benign growth, and, and they'll keep an eye on it, and that it'll start to shrink, that there won't be any more cognitive decline. I want to pray, Lord, for my wife, Samantha, as she goes um, and does that Holter monitor next week. I want to pray, Lord, that everything will work out there, will be fine and everything will be fine the reports will come back fine and that heart murmur will even be gone what a wonderful testimony that would be if that heart murmur had disappeared miraculously so we pray for that lord 
And I want to pray once again for everybody that's watching this video. I want to pray, Lord, that you uh, will help them to understand, give them a, give them a, a, a desire to study your word. And I pray, God, that you'll be with us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's sing that chorus one more time. What a day that will be. What a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see When I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. One more time. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day.